What's up, everybody? It's Lady J Bookums. And it's Brand Man Sean, and this is the Music Mavericks Podcast. Lady J, what do we have today? Man, so we got a couple of different things. We're going to take y'all here and then take y'all there, okay? Stupid. So I want to first start with um, something that's that's really good for artists to know. Uh, one thing I wanted to talk to you is about platforms. Like, what platforms should independent artists really be taking advantage of, like, right now? Like, if you had to say the three top platforms what would it be top platforms three maybe two but like so let's do this let's focus on platforms that artists probably don't hear talked about as much that Mm -hmm. are also there so at the top of the newer platforms is tiktok we already know about that and people have seen me talk plenty about that right and we'll get into that even a little bit more here but then we have dub smash dub smash we also have triller and we also Mm. have a platform called loom loom all right so those are four platforms that we can touch on a little bit in um, in different ways, but it's definitely something that artists should look out on. But and also, I want to talk about obviously some of these platforms just because I'll give my perspective because people ask me about them right. all the time. So two that you said, um, TikTok and Triller. Okay. You, I had to say it slow because I didn't want to mess it up because <laughs> I really would be want to say Triller. Night, right but all right but triller because they're kind of similar so i was i was trying mm-hmm. to figure out like which one is better and what is the is there a difference between tiktok and thriller trailer yeah what is the difference like so, what's the right. big di- biggest difference when you want to get into the technical stuff the differences are like how the algorithm flows how you get seen content a few different philosophies on how they build out the platform mm. but from a consumer standpoint they're pretty daggone diff- um, similar, right? Right, they look so kind of the same. They look kind of the same. Obviously, some of the buttons, whatever, all that stuff is different. But when we think about it from an artist standpoint and just a utility standpoint, yes, there's videos that get made on Triller that do well. And, you know, it's you're, you're still tapping into an audience. An audience exists. But at the very least, we got to look at the numbers. Right? right, yeah. TikTok is over 1.2 billion downloads at this point, mm. right? And 800 million active daily users last time that I checked. Wow. Uh, hey, that's Nipsey. Last time I checked. But <laughs> um, when we look at the other one, Triller, uh-huh. Triller is only about, they're not even 20 million active daily users. I think they're around 13 million. All right. So okay. when we're talking about 13 million compared to 800 million, just the a possibilities for your songs. When we talk about viral on one platform yeah. versus viral on another, your song will be failing on TikTok and, on, and only have 13 million in comparison to your top, 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 right? You're reaching 13 million people if you reach everybody on the platform who's active when we talk about Triller. So that alone creates a lot of different opportunity or a different way that you should be, you should be, you should be perceiving it. Yes, TikTok is the big pond. You got to figure out how to move and navigate that. It doesn't mean you ignore Triller completely. Right. Because I was just about to say, like, if Triller has, like, a smaller fan base, it it's almost like sometimes when you go into the bigger, I mean, the smaller pond, you can kind of be the big fish in that smaller pond. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I would say work both of them. But if you stepped into that whole Triller atmosphere and you can kind of get yourself built up there because they don't have a whole bunch of people, but it's still enough people for you to be that person that becomes known to take it to the next level. Like, cause every platform don't start out at like billions of people. Right. No, you know no, what I mean? No, no. So it's like, is it good to kind of get into that platform now while it's smaller because you can possibly get picked up instead of like going over to TikTok where you're like really competing with all these different type of artists. Yeah, so the thing that is... That was devil, devil's advocate again. for you. <laughs> What's up? <laughs> so the thing is, though, people are people, views are views. That's a fact. So if I get seen by 100 million people that like it like positively versus 13 million people that like it positively, that's still better, right? So when I look at Tick Triller, some of the best videos by some of the biggest celebrities and people I know that are getting support from the platform in the background, Mm -hmm. they didn't have even a million views, right? Which was disappointing to me knowing that 
I've run plenty of campaigns where I'm getting into the tens of millions of views on TikTok, right? right? But knowing how to navigate the platform and how to translate that over. But again, I also have, you know, people, partners, big managers with huge artists that are still leveraging t- uh, Triller as well. Mm. So you can... You, as an artist, a lot of times I say focus when you're indie and you don't even know one platform trying to play. Oh, I'm going to do this over here and then I'm going to do this over there mm-hmm. and try to mix up the sauce. It doesn't really make sense for an artist that's upcoming because you're just cutting off your arm before you have every time the time to develop because you need to be able to master a platform, understand the nuances. These campaigns aren't as easy as I just pay an influencer or something like that and it just starts popping yeah. off. People and that's that's why a lot of people fail at TikTok campaigns. Right? They think, oh, all I gotta do is pay these people while they're cheap, but it's so much more to it. It's so much more nuance to it. Right. And understand how to read it, make real time decisions. What that's a shameless plug. The TikTok music secrets training, TikTok music promo.com, link in the bio, all that good stuff is right. gonna happen. <laughs> but but that that'll be the beginning of your education. But there's so much more to it as a whole on how you become successful with these campaigns. So don't split your attention. I'll say that even when we talk, start talking about the Dub Smash and mm-hmm. um, and Loom, which I'll talk about, but those aren't necessarily these don't all have to be active paid campaigns. So when we're talking about paid campaigns, definitely don't split your attention mm-hmm. at the beginning. Right, but. Maybe if you have time to navigate, play on, post on, and get a feel for what these platforms work like, then you can do that. So shifting to Triller specifically, we have to look at TikTok is almost like pop land. And when I say pop land, it's just reached a level of commercial success. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean there's not niches. There's plenty of niches in music that are successful on TikTok because they have 800 million people. That's bigger than some countries, you know what I mean? (laughs) So don't think, oh, when people say stupid stuff like, oh, only this kind of genre is popping on the platform. No, you can't tell me that there aren't people who like other types of music when it's that many people. Right. Just yeah. like people complain, oh, only this type of music gets attention these days. No, that's what the media is focusing on. But all these other niches, there's there's people who are super lyrical and getting that got a million followers on YouTube and right, get millions yeah. and millions of Spotify. You just gotta tap into your niche. Right. You have to understand how to navigate platform and, and put in the work to figure it out as opposed to going with this service opinion and listening to other artists who don't necessarily know what they're talking about either. Right, so, right, right. Like when Triller is focused on the urban category though. Right? Um and you know, urban really look, black music, rap, hip hop, let's let's just say what it is. <laughs> That's what they're focused on. Literally, dub smashed is focused on the same thing. Yeah. So if you're outside of those, then I wouldn't even recommend you even try to get into that. Mm, TikTok okay. has p- pretty much branches to all of that stuff, especially since if you're a hip hop artist, we know so much of commercial music right now is inspired by using some of those same notes, beats, all that, all that good stuff. Right. Yeah. Right? So Triller, Dove Splash are more urban focused. Loom out of all these is a completely different thing. So what is Loom? All right. So Loom is like Spotify with social media. Maybe the direction Spotify could have went when they were early on, they actually had some sort of social media aspects and comments and things mm. like that. So imagine you have fans who are going on a platform to listen to music. That's what the platform is about, right? So you can find music on Loom. You can find music on Loom, uh-huh. right? You can stream and all that good stuff. But then also the artist can post, right? You go to my page, you listen to my music. You can also, also see my post. There's playlists. All like, there's, there's that whole aspect of listening to music. But then there's also the opportunity for the artist to communicate and... Um, and build community not only with other artists but with the fans themselves. So can the fans post comments? Can the fans post comments? Yes. Like so they So, so they, it's really social media but it's really But it has music. But it's That's really kinda music. That's kind of dope. Right. Exactly. And because of the psychograph, right, of those type of users, we're here early. These are the people who are more more likely to listen to music that's not already popular because mm. they identify with listening to things early they want to be the first to right something, yeah right so they have a higher tolerance for sifting through some of the music that might be trash or not trash because there's a high reward to them of finding that thing that that's that gem that nobody else knows about right so so right now if an artist had to pick um like i want to because i know you're saying like don't split your focus but like using tiktok 
is kind of different than utilizing Loom. So would it be beneficial to be like, okay, if I'm trying to get at least like two or three platforms to really go in on, like maybe you should do TikTok and Loom because they offer two different things for you as an artist. So Loom is going to give you more of the social aspects where you can communicate with your fan base and communicate with other artists as they're listening to your music. And then TikTok is going to give you that, um, that aspect to where, you know, people are creating content with your music you know, is running your streams up, is, you know, doing all these other things. So they kind of like, would it be beneficial to do both or no? If I had to pick four right now, I mean, out of that four, if I had to pick two, it would definitely be those two. Because again, TikTok, you can try to be in there posting, like create content from that standpoint. The other one isn't about content creation in that same way. Right. It's more about fan engagement, offering value. When we talk about Loom and um, the streaming, the music, it's a lot more centered around that. The content creation is the posting on TikTok, but then when we talk about running campaigns, I don't know of a way where you would be running campaigns on Loom at the time. So it's truly mm. an organic grassroots type feel. Right. Um, even if you choose Loom right now, but you don't have uh, iOS, you know, Apple, Loom's not going to choose you at the moment. You know? Oh, so you got so, you have to have an Apple product. <laughs> so you do have Shout to have an iPhone Apple at, product <laughs> at the time. You know what I mean? Um, which well, that's that, going to eliminate that's, a lot of folks. That's going to change, but that's just the reality of the marketplace uh, right. right now. So that can that also tells you like how new it is because a lot of yes. apps and stuff when they start they start out with you most know. of them start with the iOS uh, with the with, you know with the uppities. Yeah. So, oh, 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 hater. Okay. <laughs> Not on Sundays. <laughs> <laughs> but there's there's a lot that a uh, value, and it's still a new space. There is so much to learn. Um, I've had a ta- a chance to speak with some of the people over there, and their philosophy and focus on indie and that early aspect of an artist career is promising mm-hmm. versus some of these other platforms where it's it's just more commerce. Let's make money. And which is cool. All that, all that's cool. Right. Especially when you get to a certain point, but in terms of them, they even say they would like people to graduate past that, past that platform. So they don't even want you to necessarily be on loom together forever. At least as of now, that's the language that I've heard where I get on loom. I build this huge, massive audience and yeah, go, we don't want you to not get on Spotify and all these other things, but we can, we can help you build that groundswell and really engage with your community in that way. Now, question: Are they um, are they just an app, or can you access them like on the computer as well? I believe they're just an app. I don't know. That's a good question. Mm. Yeah, I'll find out. Or somebody hit Google and find out quickly enough. Right, I'm not connected to the internet right now. <laughs> right, <laughs> I was wondering because a lot of you know some apps are starting to allow you to do stuff on the computer as well. And, you know, vice versa. So I was just wondering, especially because you can communicate with people and start groups and all of that. Exactly. So before I forget, though, because this has been a a pet peeve of mine. Let me make sure I'm at the mic because I I know the audio has Uh been tripping sometimes. But a pet peeve of mine that I've been facing with artists or just seeing certain commentary is the way artists are pushing back against platforms like TikTok based on their own superficial sort of perception of what it's like mm. and out, outside of doing the work, understanding what's actually existing on the platform, that there are so many other types of music that are winning on the platform and understanding that you don't even have to be this content creator going super heavy to have success on the platform. There's so many ways to be successful on a platform like TikTok. And while I'm starting with TikTok, it's also because this idea Oh, only this type of music wins on the platform. No, there's specific types of songs. So you can have, there's no one artist where I would say market all your music on TikTok. There's no one artist where I would say market, do a music video for every single song. Right. Right. Do it. Don't do, um, uh, don't market all of your music on um, YouTube or all like that. You have to understand that there's channels that take place. So don't rob yourself of new marketing channels just because you're going with this surface level of, of attention. You have to think like a promoter, like a marketer, when you think about marketing right. your music, not this whole identity that you have where you say, oh, this looks like young kids or oh, this, and you're basing it off of stuff right. that has nothing I hear to do a with lot of, anything. I hear a lot of artists say that as I was been talking about TikTok. The main thing is like, they're like, yo, TikTok is for kids. Like, 
you know, or and you know, TikTok so used to be like Facebook, musically so or whatever. Is Instagram. So, right. So they're like, yo, there is just kids, a whole bunch of kids on there, and then they feel like they always have to do these like funny videos where you know, because you know how you got the clips and stuff. So they like, man, I'm gonna have to like get out my element pretty much and and be childish to to put like a video on. What TikTok. happens when like, artists were creative though? Like I I, I, I think a lot I, of I artists, artists. Well, the artists urban used to be artists. Creative. I think so many artists too right cool now. For school. Just, yeah, so many artists just think it's. Like a, a a thing now they're doing it for, I don't know, I just want the money, the streams, and all these other things. And so many of them aren't actually creative. Because just because people are winning in one way on a platform, that doesn't mean you have to, like, submit to that way. There might be another creative format, whether yours might be a little bit more jury, right? There's always the anti. So if there's that many people on the platform, there are some people who are into the emo thing. Some people are into happy-go-lucky. Some people are into dancing. Some people, there's literally TikTok. There's this one TikTok page I came across. This girl's just staring at the screen, bro. Like, that's it. <laughs> like and, and it has millions of views, right? right? And I'm like, that's basically all she's doing. It's another dude who has, like, a shark, and he's talking and, and doing... Like there, there's and there's this one girl that's a weird and it's a little creepy the stuff she does, but that right. call, that goes across with that goes with certain types of music, right? Like so, like there's so many different aspects, but you can't be afraid to show your creativity and market your creativity. Everybody is so busy trying to hack the game of what's already existent. Like, what do you have that's unique outside of your music, right? Because okay, now we can say, oh yeah, you do what you you do your thing on your. On, on your music, but is that the only creative form of expression? Do you have no visual aspects of creativity? Like, I, I don't know. I get frustrated by artists that refuse to be artistic and creative and only look to what's winning. And they, because they always are going to end up behind the curve anyway. Oh, this is only for kids. And then once all their peers are doing it and everybody else is winning, then they're going to get on it and try to do what they're doing. Right. You're already behind the curve. You already are going to take the L because careers aren't made out of just talent. It's not made out of just money and resources. It's also made in moments. There are certain windows of opportunity that happen where you get exponential results. And then once that window passes, you can go triple as hard as that other person did, but they walk through the door. Your ass is trying to break through the wall right. as opposed to just walking through the door when everything was a lot easier. So you're not going to get the same results or you gonna have to put way more in just to get there. I think with all of the different tools that we have now to just get ourselves in front of the people, I think that's, it has crippled a, like our artists now of this generation because mm-hmm. they don't have to work as hard to get to the fan base. They don't have to mm-hmm. like do all the things that a lot of people had to do years ago to make themselves stand out. I feel like artists years ago was just different in their own sense anyway. Like, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I need to be like this group or I need to be like this rapper. A lot of people had their own identity. So when they were putting out their creative work, it really spoke to who they are. Mm-hmm. But I think now is like a lot of artists are basically taking on the identity of other people just because they feel like this is what's selling. So they they only want to be as creative as creative as what they see. You know what I mean? So it's like if they mm-hmm. don't see their favorite rappers all, all on TikTok busting down videos and all of this stuff, they feel like that's not something that I probably need to do. And this is probably more so for the rap community or, you know, the urban community, not more like the singers, but like rappers, because they like, yo, I'm not, you know what I mean? Like they don't see anybody that they are familiar with doing this. Now they might see a whole, you can see like a whole bunch of the users might make some, a song to, who's a rapper? What kind? Lil Nas X, J. Cole? <laughs> no, Nas X is not the rapper we're talking about. J. Cole? A J. Cole or somebody a little harder. Lyrical, like a like a like a young Dolph. Like young, okay, you know yeah, what I mean? Young like Dolph. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Yo you Gotti, that, that Right, thing. yeah. So it's like those type of artists, you're not seeing like that type of content being created on. You're seeing more of the funner songs. That's what like they're a, seeing. a, a there, Nas X. Somebody who who is literally that type of music. And I know the person that does their marketing and killing it. So you the plug. And, and did that thing. You know what I mean? So Brad made a plug because he know him. I mean, <laughs> it's not even about knowing knowing them. I don't, I, look, I don't got to introduce you to somebody else's marketer. I do the junk for you. Like, it's, it's I'm, I already have artists that are doing plug. There's one song that I would consider one of the most successful songs that I'm um, doing right now on TikTok. And... I mean, I, I don't know what category you would call it, 
But it's it's not just even regular rap. It's a little bit more harder and, 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 and a little bit more grit. And then there's another song that I don't even know what genre to call it. But people are rocking with it, and the artist is super mm. delighted. Like you know what I mean? Like right. And it like I yeah I don't even know what what genre to call that, and it's, it's, it's kind of weird. But uh, I, I think, but that's what I'm saying is like when pe you know when people can't see it, they really don't yeah, believe that, in it. Sometimes, exactly. You but know like, what I mean? That's, but that's why I just want to see more point of view, perspective, and and thoughtfulness when it comes to artists because that's one of the greatest ways. To stand out. The greatest artists that we know, they all stand out due to those things that we just talked about. Like, yeah. like, but they have a way of seeing things, a way of doing things, and that's why you can mock them. You can talk like Drake and make up some statements and people are like, oh, yeah, you, you mimicking Jake. Right. Or oh, you mimicking J. Cole. Or are oh, you mimicking Jay-Z. Like, you, you can hear because they talk in a certain way. They 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 put things together and express in a certain way. Right. You as your other artist, you need to be able to develop that not only like auditorially, visually, be able to do both of those things because if you're just basing everything you build on hacking the game, that's that's where it dilutes. That's why I don't I try to tell Mark uh not Marcus artist, bruh, do your thing, get in your hole, build all your stuff, do do your do your create your art, and then look at marketing. Like I could take anything and then figure out where do I put it, piece it together. People are so focused on just, oh, I gotta do this this way, I gotta go through this lane that they don't act that they dilute their art because now they think I have to do that. Yes, you can actually build out a song to go be successful on this platform, this platform based on those formulas. Do that if you want to. That if that's your thing. Right. Um, but also understand that when it comes to this marketing thing, packaging is the mag is the magic. And knowing where to place it is the magic. So if you have a song and you in your creative bag and it happens to be a super kitty song, I'm going to place it after Mar Barney. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. if, it's a, if it's a harder song, then I'm going to put it in a different place. You know what I right. mean? Like it's all, all those choices can be made. We just need there to be something unique there in the first place versus you thinking I need to do this or I need to do that. If you, you pick the marketing channels and placements and all those other decisions get made after the fact. You can't eliminate any platform completely because it, it might work for one song amazingly. It might not work for the next song. Right. Yeah. So I think like, well, basically artists need to start getting into their creative bags. 100%. You know, we we got to get more creative with the content, the videos, the, you know, everything about your process should just speak more to who you are. Like, let your personality come out a little bit more and then target, yeah. you know, your music or target certain things on different platforms. Now, another platform you said was, um, what was it, EDM? What was that? Smash? Boom? Dub Smash. Dub Smash. So you said Dub Smash is more so for, like, it's like an urban audience? Yeah, TikTok, Triller, and Dub Smash are all in a similar space, right? It's the video-driven and people create content around it, whether I'm talking over uh, a movie or if I'm doing stuff to music. All of those are in the same category. Mm -hmm. um, Dub Smash has, well, at their peak, they definitely have more users than Triller, but they're trying to figure their life out right now. So I can't immediately say that you should invest heavily into it, but there's that doesn't mean that there's no value that you can hack out of it either. Now, what about driving uh, your, you, or using like your other other platforms to kind of drive your traffic there because I know I was talking to um, artists about TikTok and he was just like, well, you know, I don't have a TikTok. So I'm like, okay, well, go ahead and create one. And he was like, well, how do I get people over there? So I'm like, you know, you can get on your Facebook or get on your Instagram or get on these other platforms to try to drive those followers or those fans like back to TikTok. Like, should they go that route or is it like building your fan base on TikTok is just start you starting to create that content, um, communicate with other TikTokers. I don't know. Like, how, how do you go about, like, really getting people over to that platform so that you can kind of build up? All right, so TikTok isn't heavily built around what your friend group is immediately around you and creating a world around that mm. and perspective around that. That's how most social media is. TikTok is based off the algorithm and your interaction with that, and we show you more of that world, right? Um, so if you don't like what your TikTok look like, you looking in the mirror, kind of. Um, <laughs> so, like, for real. Like, I, I remember it was, it was like a church group. They had to advise all their other people because they wanted to be on there to 
spread church word, but then also um, watch the kids and all that stuff. Make sure, mm. not in a creepy way, like make sure right. they're not wild. You know what I mean? <laughs> right. And they had to tell people in trains, like, no, I know you don't like what you're seeing or so, some of these kids, but just if you don't like it, you know, like start to like the things that you do like what you see, right? And and start to swipe past those. Mm. And the algorithm is super sensitive. The algorithm is more sensitive than most of these other ones when it comes to what it's showing you and reacting to it. That's what your world will look like. Mm. Um, but when it comes to translating an audience over, I wouldn't focus heavily on going Facebook to Instagram and pushing those over to TikTok. I would do TikTok and pushing it to the other ones, right? Mm. Um, because what you'll find is, for one, people translate over to those others from TikTok a lot easier than the other way around. But yes, maybe to get a little bit of like attention on TikTok, it might, it might be nice to do it. Um, especially if you are somebody who already has a fan base, but if you don't, it's, that's not, you know, okay, maybe post, here's my TikTok here, put it in your IG bio, but I wouldn't even waste any energy on it. I would try to become good at TikTok and get those people to the other platforms. Okay. So I, I also had somebody, and I think you, I'm sure that you have this in your training. Cause we know y'all don't know. Brandman and Sean has the, the TikTok training, TikTok music secrets training, right? So it also, I'm guessing we'll cover how to even get your music on there. That's free, by the way. Yes. Right. You know, because I, I did have an artist is like, do, because I know they have different type of ways. So an artist was asking me, like, do I just get on TikTok and basically record myself with my music playing on the background? So I was telling him, like, no, you can actually get your music on the platform, yeah. you know? Um, and a lot of people were still trying to figure out, like, how do you do that? You know, and I'm like, uh, the same way you would get your music like on Instagram stories, pretty much, isn't it? Like, um, kind of, sort of. So, from your district kid, district. definitely allows you to do that, right? And there, I think there's another one that got added on recently. I can't remember, but other than that, you can old school it, and all you need is the sound. You don't need the full song because no one's gonna be using the full song, right? You, there's a video that Corey did in our TikTok series. This is like back in August 2018. Type brand man TikTok series or something like that it should start to pop up how mm -hmm. to get your music on tiktok and also i think we have a tiktok playlist at this point but it's there's two different ways you do it officially through there or you can just upload the sound because any video you record technically becomes sound and we're doing this and we post this on tiktok now somebody could take, take that, that sound and, and, and then put run, it in their right? video right so you can put your music on in that same way a lot of times i advise to do it that way not gonna go into those reasons because it's not we talked a lot about tiktok but it ain't necessarily a tiktok episode i know we, we, we TikTok just, turned out to be the number one i so. know right um it just it just is what it is at this point i'm i always tell people i'm not gonna create some new secretive like, this is how you do it stuff when it doesn't exist. I'm going to just tell you, look, this is what it is right, right now. And this isn't what it is because I'm predicting the future. This is what it is because this is what's happening. I'm seeing results and behaviorally paying attention to fans and people, not opinions of people, will actually get you to the the right place faster than everybody else. Right. It's important to be able to adapt, right, and stay you up to, to date. Of, of what's going on because like every platform might not be here forever you know what i'm saying so it's, yeah. it's like somebody is always coming out with something new that can be beneficial to you for multiple reasons whether it's the you know find you a date or you know grow your fan base either way so it's like we we literally got to stay up to date and ride the wave like ghost ride the wave gary v said something that i actually like i super agreed with i was already kind of thinking that way so TikTok, Snapchat, all these things, right? All these platforms, all, some of them, they might come and go, mm -hmm. right? For one, if TikTok pops, just like, let's say, uh, Vine. Uh, like Vine, and then it dissolves, that attention doesn't mean that it wasn't worth it. Right. Especially if you flip it. King Batch and so many of the other people who were Vine stars have full careers and millions of Instagram followers were able to translate over there. They're popping and they built off and they're doing everything they, that they want to do because they got a huge audience while it was free and easy on Vine and translated it some, to somewhere else. So you can't say it's not worth it. If you just don't win, you don't win. Okay, cool. That's just because you didn't do good on the platform or you didn't take advantage of it while it existed. But the bigger thing is understanding when it comes to marketing, you have Again, to we always think about the end customer, the end consumer. Because at the end of the day, remember, before Facebook, 
you, you people were communicating through radio, TV, and all those things, right? Before Instagram, people were communicating through Facebook. And, and what people don't understand about these vehicles of communication is they don't only offer an opportunity to reach people mm -hmm. and communicate with people. They also create a format in which the users like to be communicated with. Right. So now somebody our age, they can be communicated with a short snippet, a tweet. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's cool with us where somebody else of a certain era might be like, bro, I need some more information. For right. It's like, you didn't really yeah. say anything. Right. Or, or, you know, the, the certain banners we're, we're used to the quotes on IG and, and the way that aesthetic, so we can be marketed to in that way. There's a generation who's coming up TikTok first. Right. And if yeah. you want to be prepared and over and over some time, these people will want to be communicated with in that way. Right. That will be their first form of communication. A bigger, clearer um, explanation is text messaging. Yeah. It's like some people, yeah. you got a certain class like, bro, don't text me, call right. me. Right. That's they, how I am. That's how they like to be talked to. I, call me. That's how you market. Have a conversation with me. You know, give me a chance to talk right. back. Love me. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then some people are like, nah, just text me. And you can market to them based on those behaviors and understanding. So if you don't take time to at least understand how these platforms work, you're not going to be able to understand how to reach this customer effectively. Right. And that's why it's important to not take your own opinions and, and stubbornness or whatever you got going on, you know, whatever afflictions is going on, pain, suffering, right. hating, whatever you got, you got going you on. You can't get it right? about your spirit. You have to realize it's irrelevant right. because the market is really built on principles and the principles don't give a damn about how you feel. The principles exist regardless of who's using them good or bad, right? We'll see somebody become a dictator off of some principles. We'll see somebody become a president off of some principles. We'll see somebody become Mother Teresa or some martyr off of the same principles, the exact same way of building a fan base, the right. exact same way of, of reaching out to a community. Well, okay, so look, we I want to switch gears. So if y'all was looking for platforms, y'all got some good ideas by now. So I mean, a whole lot. This is the platform episode at this point. Right. We might have to switch some of the other stuff to another. I know, right? Because we kind of went in. I, mean? I had some other stuff that I wanted to get to. So, you know, but we kind of went in. So you want to just, you know, no, we got, we got, look, we got, how, how long have we been on this one? We, we got a, a solid 15 minutes. All right, all right. So I wanted to talk about something that's been happening uh, recent that kind of goes along the lines with, you know, artists trying to figure out what to do or what to put out because ultimately, even though you are an artist and you have your creative mind and, and freedom of speech and everything, you know, I want to talk about how you being an artist and who you are and what you're speaking about in your music and what you're doing in the public is affecting other people like your fans and, and the people who are kind of looking up to you. Cause I feel like right now, uh, especially everybody that's using these platforms, like we're looking up to all of these artists as our idols, especially the younger generation. Like mm -hmm. these are our idols. These are the people that's influencing us to do or not to do, to be or not to be, right? Mm -hmm. And okay, with the Shakespeare, I see, I see <laughs> you, those slid. You feel right me? There. Okay, you feel me? But uh, but I think it's like at an all time high right now because of the fact that we have social media and it's and we're able to kind of reach out and touch these artists and access them and really like tap into like who they actually are in real life right and and i think it's it's becoming an issue on one hand or you could say it's an issue or you could say it's not but we had you know for recently we just had juice world that passed away Bobby, and um you know it's like he passed away and then it's like once he passed away we have all these people coming out like, I can't believe this, and he's gone too soon, and blah, blah, blah. But it's like all his music basically talked about was doing drugs, you know, being depressed, which is a, a big thing in our industry, period, entertainment, acting, you know, sports, all of that, um, you know. And it's, and it's like a lot of that is being our younger generation who are on – Instagram and TikTok and all this stuff. Like, those are the songs that people love. Those are the artists that people love. Right. So I want to yeah. talk about, you know, the fact that, like, should we be really looking up and inspiring to be, like, these artists? You know what I'm saying? Like, that have they have so many issues. And it's, it's like, because a lot of artists, especially, like, 
the urban artists will come out and say like, yo, I'm, I'm nobody's role model. Like I'm not a, a lot of people like Cardi B kind of said that in the beginning, mm-hmm. like a couple different Rihanna people said that back in the day. Right. Like yeah. they literally came out and said this like earlier in their career. I think before they got to the point where they was like, I am a role model because I understand all of the people who are looking up to me. It goes back to principles. It doesn't matter if you feel like you're a role model, whether you want to, just being in a certain position, having visibility and influence will make you a role model. Right. Because that's just how it works. So it's like you're signing up for this. Like, so recently we had the whole Lizzo situation where Lizzo... Why, why you roll? Thing. First of all, why you roll your eyes? You got that thing, nah, nah. Right, you just rolled your eyes. She we got no camera that now. Thing moving, doing all- is that how? She, is that how she was? That Lizzo. Was me, that was me trying to mimic the booty with doing my own. But body. so Lizzo <laughs> pulled up to the to the game. Yeah. With her, her booty cheeks, her 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 tee, long dress, whatever you extended, Had whatever you know, cut out booty cheeks, cut out with the black thong, and then she was. <laughs> You know, they put the song on. She turned around. First of all, you already know a girl about to twerk when she turn around and then her legs go out. Like, she get that stance. You know what I mean? You already know. Stability. All right. You got, first you got to get it right. And then she just started clap, clap, clap. You know, the, all the cameras went on her booty. And then you had a lot of people who were just like, oh, my God. You know, they everybody was tweeting. A lot of people was not for it. Mm-hmm. And then we had some people that was like, yes, girl, do you? You know, of because. Course. Right. Are you? Uh, what, whose side are you on? Because I feel like I'm on my side. What that's does that mean? I don't under. All right, see, we we that's two different topics. Like the, from the Lizzo to the Juice World, but it does re- go co- like interrelate because of the influence. So let's put Juice World on the table for a second, and I'm gonna talk about how I just feel about the Lizzo situation. All right, go um, ahead. Outside of the other stuff that it exists, regardless. So just in general. Yeah, man, mm, I'm not. I wasn't feeling that. Like, I didn't. I didn't understand why. Like, I'm. I've never been. I get that she has her own freedom of expression. Blah 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 blah. But I just thought it was just bad timing. It wasn't. It wasn't necessary. And that I'll. I'll leave it at that. Like, I didn't, there wasn't any additional feelings. Oh, cause she looked this way. Cause she, or cause this that. It was just that simple. It's like mm, why? Like I've always been that person. You know, back like in school. Where you have some of those people that just seem like they want attention. You know what I mean? They need, and they're doing that extra stuff. And it's like, you know that you're doing this for that. You act like you're not, and it's just you, but you're doing it for attention. That's what, that's what that kind of felt like to me. I don't know her, and that's what is exactly why she did it. But I'm just saying, the way it comes off, right? And we like, to, we like to say that we have no responsibility for the way people receive things. You know, that's just the more immature us. But when you get old and realize, like, hey, if I'm in a relationship, yeah, I can say I said it this way and I didn't mean it this way. But if I want this thing to be productive, I got to take some responsibility for how you received it, right? She has to at least understand that what that comes off like, what the environment is, and it just it just wasn't necessary. But, like, do I care? <laughs> but for it but for people who because first of all i think she has that kind of music that is really like um inspiring to younger people uh people who have issues with you know the way they look they're they're not the norm you know they might be this or that overweight whatever it's like you know her her music is kind of like uplifting for those people who have been put down you know what i mean so i get that so do you think it you know when it comes to us being influenced or or us looking up to people and idolizing people you know could that have been a moment where everybody all the other big girls who don't even like to wear things that are fitting they feel like i gotta wear a sweatshirt you know that could have been a moment to say to them like girl your cheeks can be out too because first of all it's it's been i don't care who you are what you look like okay because i'm about to say it's been cases where we have these Mm -hmm. celebrities that look more like a rihanna or or Nicki minaj that go places half naked but there's an environment right that like all right if you want one of those red carpets and you try to make some artistic statement and bring all this uproar then okay yeah you do that and blah 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 right but we're not gonna act like kim kardashian didn't get like speared for a lot of stuff she did. Yes, it became successful. And she utilized that negative energy 
Like, I don't even know anybody who really says they like Kim Kardashian. However, she has a huge <laughs> career and a huge fan base. I'm right. like, where are these fans? Because nobody around me ever says, like, I don't feel one way or another. But I never hear anybody who likes, and a lot of things are, are because of this. Not well, she has a whole lot of reasons people like, uh, like her or whatever. But the point is, people talked about her being naked or too much body and all those kind of things, right? The, and that goes with all these celebrities. So it's not just a, a Lizzo or I'm a big girl type thing. Right, there's certain environments, and I I see that she said she didn't have her her ass to the seat or whatever, because that was another thing. It's like, bro, just just from a sanitary standpoint, <laughs> like that's like you know not wanting to be on Marta sometimes because I get on the bus and then you see, yo, bro, this dude was sitting here and he did, like, right, you know, buddy kind of dirty, or it's like you know, or yeah. he have he did have his pants down, like I, I didn't see some weird stuff on the train, but like. Like that, even from a sanitary standpoint, is is kind of like all right. But she says she didn't. I don't know. Whatever. Maybe she didn't put her ass to the seat, right? But the whole <laughs> the whole thing about it for me is like okay. So much of marketing and branding is getting attention, and of course they say you no. Know, All whatever. publicity is good yeah, publicity. Yeah, that that whole thing. Which okay, whatever. I, that like that that says a lot about the type of person. You know, you are depending on which way you want to She, go I mean, that. she got a lot of people that was like other because I think companies recognize like that we can sell more if there's something exciting and, and you know, what I mean, off the wall happening. So it was people, other companies, other oh. teams that was hitting her like you would come to us anytime. Easy. You know what I mean? Cause Easy. It's like so she. Really, she probably got way more opportunities off of that than not from the attention. You know, case. and that's not, and that's not, and people. That's the problem with consumers, though. Consumers get get mess. They get get it twisted, thinking because X person did that, and oh, I as a company stepped in. I'm supporting them. No, that's an op. This person <laughs> is getting. They got attention. They're bringing attention. They're bringing me attention. That's right. that's a and me looking like I support them brings me money. Exactly. Right? Like that. That's all. A lot of that stuff is. So it's not necessarily support. But I know what because I feel like especially when it comes to Juice World because of the nature of that we need to we're gonna do that on the next one. But with this, I want to question which is a little less music related. It's really just society related. That whole idea of the person that. In Lizzo's situation, she stands for, which she's the person who's going over the hill, being first. I'm going to show my body in this way that, again, like you said, certain people, they don't, they're not comfortable with it. So she's ready right. for that community, right? Because she's been family. online. She's been dropping like naked pictures, you know? Yeah. And all that. And that's, and look, that's a fair assessment because these people have been done wrong, right? And, and they get their security or, or insecurities get taken advantage of. Right, or they get pushed in that place and their self esteem is, is beat down. So this person represents that for them. I get all that. Right. But then at some point I also feel like and you as a woman can respond to this. Okay. Like, you better say oh, look, you better say I it get, right. I get confused where like let's say we might be like, Oh male like males are hoes and, and they don't and this is a double standard because they could be a hoe, right? Mm-hmm. And not get talked about a certain way. Mm-hmm. Facts. Right? Cool. Cool. Right? But I don't think I feel like the the reality of things should not be, oh, well, I'm going to act like a male and to free myself. I should I'm going to go do this because if we recognize this thing as a negative behavior, if you recognize it as a negative behavior, you should want them to act right. Not, oh, you go act wrong and now you feel empowered by acting wrong. Or a different example is like if I feel like, like I don't. I feel like it's a negative thing sometimes that body is always used as a form of freedom and sexual expression. Like you don't have to like the very fact that you are having to use that as freedom sometimes Mm -hmm. is kind of the a response to the same patriarchy suppression. So you're still operating in the same place because we suppress this. Now you're doing that. And it's cool. Like you need all forms and all sides, but I just sometimes it's a fatigue when I see like the only way of freedom to be like those type of things. Oh, I got to be outlandish and act in a way that is outside the norm. You get what I mean? So this is one thing because like outside the norm 
is like a relative thing. Like right. that might be your norm, right? Because like before Lizzo became somebody that the world knew, that might have been her personality already. No, and then was. right. That so was. so it's it's really like when it comes back to you talking about, you know, getting your, your creative bag and being and putting your personality like that is already her personality. And it's just now because she's in the public eye more we're seeing this, but that, that probably was her before this. Now, one thing that you said, <laughs> you was talking about, you know, men do all of this and they get called to this, but nobody really looks down to them. And you said something like, so females are doing things like men. And I don't think it's like females are, I'm going to be more sexual or, or put my body or whatever to, to show like, Oh, I'm like this man or anything. I think it's more so like, we're not afraid of those names or that stigma anymore. You know what I mean? So it's like, and, and right now people okay. are saying like roles are reversing, you know, women, even in the music, if you listen to music, like all, most of the female rappers is coming out talking about getting the money, tricking, you know scamming what I mean? Dude. Scamming all and right, all yeah, of this, yeah. you know what I mean? And it's, and it's a lot of people are like, Oh my God. But it's like, it's being looked at crazy because it's out of the norm for people to hear. See, it's, I'm not saying that though. Cause I'm used to those type of women too. Like that's that's all. What you know about them? Look, bro. I'm from where I'm from, I is who I is. <laughs> but what, all I'm saying is, I'm talking about the people who specifically use that as the rhetoric, right? I, people who are being who they are, that is what it is, right? Lizzo has always been that way. I might even like so. I might. Even but don't it. you feel like every artist uses that? Like every female, no, 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 I think I'm, it's I'm weird talking, because she's big. I'm not talking about the people being the people. Oh uh, no, no, no! I'm not even talking about Lizzo. I'm talking about the attached. Um, propaganda that happens, how people use these artists, right, to spin for their own narratives. Yeah. This represents that. Well, if Lizzo's just being Lizzo, she might not be doing this because of this, that, and the third, but you say, oh, she's doing this, and y'all don't like it because of that, or women, this is empowerment. Like, so we get, people get trapped because of marketing and the communication in these visions of what empowerment look like, in the same way people getting trapped in what different looks like, different gets marketed to people. So much so that people think they're being different and they all are doing the same shit. Right. So when anything gets communicated as empowerment, right? And it's this still monotone vision and perspective based on simply being the anti to what the suppression was, I have a problem with that too. Because now it's like this, the the... The empowerment sh should be you being able to be who you are, not raging against the machine. Raging against the machine still shows an in internal thing. Like that's I'm still, doing this because they're still feeling that struggle. And I think a lot of it, from a marketplace standpoint, it takes certain people doing that, right, to help other people get out their bag. Just like earlier in the conversation, we talked about artists. Right, needing to see other artists do this stuff just to think they can do it. The same thing happens, right? You know, we know about rep representation is a very real thing um, for people, whether that's a certain person of a certain color being in a certain position, so we know we can do it too, or a certain person of a certain weight, or all those things. That's a very right. real thing. But once stuff gets like marketed heavy as this is the thing, now businesses can capitalize it starts to be exploited right, that's, that's yeah. all i'm saying like once you get to like now i can exploit it because i know how you're going to think i know what you're how you're building your identity and it becomes a new box that then a couple of generations away they have to undo that but then they're going to create their own bs because everybody is trying to make things better that don't necessarily even need to be improved they just need to be like done away with because they shouldn't should have never done been there in the first place but i think like you know when it when it comes to like these artists being idols i feel like they are setting like the standards for certain things and i think you know other people um are taking those and running with them and that and i feel like right now that's why we're getting so so much more of this like sexual thing when it comes to females and music, you know, and that's translating to all of regular girls in every day. You know what I mean? Hot, hot girl summer. You know hey. what I mean? Like period. See, like to me, like all of that to stuff. Me, that like, was like that's just a regular. Are you just feeling regular that? Summer. Look, oh, you feeling that? <laughs> <laughs> so I was, was feeling a, hot girl oh, summer. That was just a regular summer. Like so, 
That was, I don't know, man. But it's like these yeah. things that that artists do. You know, you guys watching this, you know, the things that you guys are talking about, the things that you are actively doing or showing um, your fans and your fan base, like, it's people who literally look up to you. You know what I mean? Like, there's somebody, there's, a, there's probably mad big girls that really look up to Lizzo, like, yo, she's really standing from us. So when I see her do this like it literally makes me smile like yes b i'm about to have my cheeks out like you know what i mean <laughs> or if you you're a rapper and it's like yes like oh you you glorifying all these different things like it just makes people feel like when prince, i can do when prince had his cheeks out he was on stage at his concert people still trip too right because of social norms and all that stuff but environment that was the thing for the for there right just like you don't come to like people, you people go to funerals in certain colors, right? Like every, my my problem is every single rule or every single norm isn't something that's a bad thing, right? Right. It's just like when you come to my household, if I want you to take your shoes off, I'm not that kind of house. You got that kind of house. I definitely but got that kind of house. You got that kind of household. Like it's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. That's just how you operate in this space. Contextually. I talk to my mom different than I'm going to talk to you, right? Then I'm going to talk to my homies, my right. dad. Like, every conversation, you talk to people differently. So when people try to act like certain norms existing in certain environments are all oppressive, like, all encompassing, it's like, nah, that's not so. Now, when we get into certain deeper identity things where people have been pushed and, and prodded since they've been, a, you know, a young person, like, if you're struggling with weight and, or whatever, uh, color, or whatever, all that stuff, I get it, right? So, but it's just it's a, it's a place. What was it, time and place for everything? Well, I guess there there is, but no, but so because those are two different conversations, right? The societal stuff, but then when we just talk about the norms of how she was dressing in that environment, it's like it's not that big of a deal to be like, oh, that was that was inappropriate for that environment, right? It's in the same way. Like I said, people dress certain ways at weddings. You know what I mean? Like you, apparently, you don't come to the to the uh, wedding wearing a white dress if you ain't the bride or something like that. You <laughs> right. know, like it's all kind of rules. But what is it about? It's it's about what's the focus in that thing. So sometimes when it's really narcissism, right, or self indulgence and in, in, in involvement, when you always have to. Go be moving in your way, no matter what the environment. Because sometimes right. it's not about you. If I'm here and I'm coming, it's, it's your event, and I'm I'm coming looking stunning. I'm not getting it about me, right? It's like, <laughs> no, this is about you, like. Right. But I'm coming here, like you can't you know, be cuter than me. I gotta be right. late to the event and all that stuff. Right. Like, no, I'm supposed to be here to res to respect you and whatever you got going on. So the same thing is in some of these environments. There's things that are supposed to be the focus in art. So you can't be mad at when people feel like you're taken away from the focus or in some of the norms. Again, it by itself, is it the worst thing in the world? No, but we also have to realize these norms, once you understand the rules, then you know when, where, and how to break them if you want to, but you can do it intentionally. That's what I do as a marketer. It's like sometimes I'm like, yeah, these are the norms. Right. So I'm going to go with the norms so I can communicate with these people effectively. But then sometimes I'm like, these are the norms. So I'm going to break these rules. But I know I'm being like an asshole or I know I'm being brash right. or I know I'm doing something that's against it. So I can't pretend like, oh, these people are wilding. I know they should be wilding and I want them to wild because I know what it's going to, you know, right. going to do for So it's, it's almost like, you know, as an artist, entertainer, whatever. I think, you know, even though artists want to stay in their own creative box and they want to express themselves, I think when you get into this industry, no matter if you're actor or whatever, it's like you literally have a responsibility to kind of know better during certain times. Yeah. I mean, I think that just comes with being an adult and being conscious of the world, right? And, and things you, are, you would things, think so. Things around you, like once you have that you know, the responsibility is on you. Being ignorant is being ignorant. So you can't, you're not responsible for that. But once you know something, then it's up to you whether you follow it or not, but you still kind of have that responsibility. Again, this is, it is something as big, as big as that now. Cause that leads back into the deeper influence. That Lizzo thing, I feel like that's a bad representation cause it's still so trivial at the end of the day to me, mm -hmm. right? Like it's, it's still, I'm not surprised it became a big of a deal as it was, but like 
I whatever. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the camera people also decided to keep the camera on her. You know what I mean? Right. Like it is what it is. She was like, I wouldn't I wouldn't even be surprised if if they actually formulated something like that. You know mm. what I mean? Like just the way some of this stuff moves. So it was like that, eh, that's not that big of a deal. But understanding as an artist the power you have, the power of words and the influence you do have is only going to not only when we talk about the positive impact you can make, but even make you be able to leverage what you have for your career selfishly um, a lot better. Yeah. So, but all right, because I want to, I really want to go deeper though in that influence because there's so many other nuances and some deep shit, right. especially when we talk about the whole Juice World situation. We do have another episode, but for now, it's just another episode. We went, we went way off, but I hope y'all got value out of it, especially when we talked about the platforms all the way to this, this uh, Lizzo and, and this. <laughs> right. But that's the nature of what this podcast will be, just to let y'all know. We're going to get deep with the practical stuff, the the artists, the marketing, but we also have to touch the world so we can show the, the macro, how you can think about things strategically and how certain things get perceived. Exactly. Y'all take it how you want to, how you like it. Lady J, are you going you gonna to take us out? Yeah, man. So y'all already know it's Lady J Bookums. You can find me on Instagram, all the platforms at Lady J Bookums, brand man, Sean, Lizzo Hater. I'm just like, yeah, that was, was kind of cold. I was, was just like, like cold, <laughs> 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 so it's the Music Mavericks podcast. We out.